let's be less aggressive with the price if possible to get how do you even know what a reasonable number is when you didn't even show him any kind of numbers hello real estate friends do you know what time it is it's time to react to selling sunset something you guys have asked me to react to i hate to say for research i ended up watching the whole entire season but today i thought it'd be really fun if we just went ahead and pulled out all of the actual real estate transactions so let's just go ahead and break this down of all the things that are true and absolutely dead wrong when it comes to real estate transactions and then you can give me your opinion in the comment section and share your stories as well i might even feature it in a future video Here we go with Sally go. all right first things first let's just talk about the fact that these signs do not have the all the requirements that are required of any signage that goes in the yard when you have your house for sale you have to have your broker's uh, phone number on there maybe they took that off because of the show but the other thing you have to have is the equal housing symbol this thing right here you have to have that and on every single sign uh, business card i don't know how it is in your area but that is a big giant no-no i know that another company tried to get away with that here and they got in trouble what's up hey, man? man good, good to, to see you, you. This is Christine. Hi, how are you, Christine? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Hi, Simba. Hi. 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 I will say this. One of the things I do love about this show is the fact that they always go as a group in order to go to somebody's house. You never know whose house you're stepping into as a real estate agent. Earlier this week, we told you about the two men accused of trying to abduct a realtor in North Ridgeville. David Helton and Michael Evans, both facing abduction and assault charges. And especially when you're meeting a new buyer, a lot of times you don't know enough about them to go and show the house to them in private. So the fact that this broker is looking out for their agent's safety is amazing. I love that. I love that he shows up with them. The ceilings wanted this to be actually 16 feet high, but we had to settle at uh, 14. 14 is uh, pretty tall. Yeah. No, you I know what the AC cool. bills are in a 16 foot high That's ceiling. true. That's true. But the good thing is I want a solar company. So my entire electrical bill for this whole house is like $22 a month. Wow. So let's go ahead and talk about the solar panels. Solar panels in the state of Louisiana don't add a lot of value. You can see them all over New Orleans, but there's two things that you should know as, first of all, a buyer and a seller. So if you're thinking about putting on solar panels, just know that as soon as you put those on your new roof or old roof, you have voided out your warranty. And solar panels are notorious for leaking in your roof. Another thing about solar panels that most people don't know about is that the panels themselves are leased so if you are selling at your house that has solar panels you're gonna have to make sure that the buyer is gonna go ahead and take on that lease so you're almost like having to sell two things not just the house you're gonna have to sell the solar panels as well something to think about curious what you were thinking in terms of price point I'm sure you have something in mind I think for what I'm willing to let it go for is about six million dollars six is really Hi. So we do ask sellers how much they're thinking that their house would be sold for. I'm interested to see what they come back at, but that is a legitimate question to ask a seller. How much do you think that your house is worth? But I would go for five, three, personally. What is your opinion? I think we should definitely start with 5.495 and then just see what happens. Another thing about this that is kind of blowing my mind is that you can't like magically come up with numbers in your head. I don't care how long you've been in the business. You're going to have to show some facts of where you're getting your magical 5.4 number and why this is lower. They're, they never even showed or presented any kind of evidence to justify the price that they're offering this guy. This guy thinks it's 6 million. I would have like charts, flow charts and documentation, everything that you would need to understand why it isn't worth six million dollars like somebody very famous to me always said data never lies as much as you want to believe that your house is worth a certain amount of money um the data tells you something different every single time so um i'm a little confused on why they didn't do that by pricing it lower i feel like it gives us the opportunity to be in a potential bidding war situation Where's where you could get more than right. you know you, you initially signed up for so i feel like let's be less aggressive with, with the price if possible to get how do you even know what a reasonable number is when you didn't even show him any kind of numbers see this is the kind of thing about reality tv it's sometimes it's just not so reality what offers you accept are completely up to you and we'll also work on finding another opportunity so it's more enticing for you to accept a reasonable offer okay <laughs> all right cool Cool. All right, Thanks sounds so good. Much, guys. Well, obviously he trusts these real estate agents quite a bit. 
<laughs> to just be like, cool, let's just do it. Uh, even though I think my house is worth six million, we're just gonna throw it at five, four and hope for the best, <sighs> whatever. They obviously know their market and their people better than I do, but I would never do it that way. That's just not me. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh my oh, God, so, so good to see you. So good seeing you as well. Monica came to me because she's looking for marketing expertise. And I feel like she came to the right person because if there's anyone that knows how to grab attention, it's me. I've been doing some research and thinking of really cool ways that we can get people up to Mount Olympus. So I thought we should throw a really, really cool event just to get people there. Okay, so real estate agents always put on these kinds of parties, especially for very expensive listings. They'll have like broker agent open houses. Some uh, open houses are a lot more extreme than others. In the typical world of just regular real estate, we have open house on Sunday. People come in, they look at your house. Most of the time, they're not qualified buyers. When it comes to open house, I'd much rather do an agent open house because you know the people that are coming there are actual real estate agents working with clients. When you have a regular open house, I hate them. Honestly, I think they're the, probably the most unsafe, unsecure, ridiculous waste of the seller's time because most of the people that are walking through that house generally are A, just looking, or B, just wanna see how it's decorated. Some of them are even using it for intent of maliciousness. Like they're going there to case the place to see what you got there. So later on when they see when you pull out, that they can go ahead and steal your items. It has happened. I do not care for open house. I know a lot of real estate agents think they're wonderful, but I can honestly tell you in the 13 years that I have done real estate, I actually stopped doing open house about four years ago and I've only sold one house according to open house. And that was because another real estate agent sent their client over. It wasn't because they saw the open house sign. Yeah, so I kind of want to show you ideas because I've done a few parties in my day and you know, I like to do fun and interesting things like popcorn with me. I mean, that's my face, obviously. And then I've done like lighters, that's my Popcorn's face, Popcorn's messy. We don't have to do that, but I'm just saying like flowers and candies and you know, like really cool lights and smoky cocktails, maybe. I mean, yeah, okay, sure yeah, so yeah, I, I, okay, no, 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 Zoo animals, really? <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine having like a zebra in your backyard? Uh, this is how the other half lives, I guess. You like burgers? I love, yeah. Okay. Ours. So then I had a twist on burgers and I thought how cool would it be to get people up there with a really, really fun slogan. What if we did burgers and Botox? Can we talk about liability just for one second? Okay. All right, so you have this house and it's for sale and you're gonna have people come in and have burgers. Perfect, works for me. But Botox, oh my God. I just can only imagine if you had somebody in there and got a bad batch of Botox and then the person would not only sue the real estate agents, they would sue the sellers, they would sue, holy cow, the amount of disclosures that you would have to sign so you don't get yourself in trouble. As clever as this is, this really sounds like a bad idea. Burgers and Botox. I don't think you have to market specifically for Botox. Then it's gonna be known as a Botox house, you know? All right, so this lady understands it's gonna be the Botox house. She ain't having it. This is the co-listing agent and she is not allowing burgers and Botox. Thank goodness. So, we have um, food, right? I have some food. I have the burgers here. The Botox ladies on the way. Obviously, this is a little oh, more wow. casual. So we are doing the liked. Botox. Ooh, she didn't listen. I granted that it is thinking outside the box, but let's be realistic. Botox at your house that you want to sell. How do those two things even relate? How does Botox relate to selling your house? I don't know. I, I can only imagine being the sellers of that. <sighs> I would not allow it. <laughs> I think we're in Hollywood after all, right? And then we have some wine and you know drinks. We can boost people up before we put needles in them. And she's gonna have booze there. So booze, burgers, and Botox. She should have just named it that. Don't do that if you're a seller. This is this is setting you up for a massive liability. Massive liability. I have a question for you. Oh, new transaction. Oh, my Stanley listing. I have this um, person who's not ready to buy just quite yet, but he would be interested in leasing. So why isn't the house selling? 
that's something that happens with sellers all the time. You'll get people that are looking to lease or lease purchase, which is two different things. Lease is just a traditional like renting and a lease purchase is something that's planning on leasing it for a period of time. And then they plan on purchasing it within like a six month to one year's uh, status. So they uh, usually put down a huge deposit when it comes to a lease purchase here in Louisiana, like the minimum is like 10 grand, but it can go as high as well, however how much the house is. So that's always something you can negotiate if you decide to do a lease purchase. I know it's not like ideal, but if I haven't gotten any, you know, firm offers from anyone else, do you think that's something that would be appropriate to present a lease rather than come to him with a buyer? Yeah. Well, before he answers, I'm going to answer this. Whenever you're presented with any offer, doesn't matter if it's, you know, a penny or even a bag of sand, no matter what is presented to us as real estate agents as an offer on a house, that it doesn't matter what they offer, you have to present it. You have to present even the really, 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 really crappy offers. And it's, sometimes it's embarrassing. So if you offer something crappy, just know that you're going to offend the sellers. And if you don't care about offending the sellers, just know you're going to get rejected. The answer is this. You have to present everything to your client. Um, Anytime you get an offer, whether it's lease, sell, it's your obligation to go to the, your client and give him that information and let him make told a decision. You so. But if you don't think you can sell it, leasing's better than nothing. A lease is not ideal, but if the sellers are looking to cover some of their mortgage costs and the market's a little soft, meaning that it's not, you know, houses aren't flying off the market, you know what? It's a great option. Sometimes they can work against you and sometimes they work out for the best. So no matter what you still have to offer that to the sellers to see if they're even interested not ideal but i get it you Eight. hi i haven't had any offers on my 75 million dollar listing after seeing how creative and successful christine's broker open was with the burgers and botox i'm really hoping she can channel some of that towards my listing if anyone knows how a millionaire wants to live it's christine <laughs> So it's not unusual to bring on somebody in your office to help sell your house, if, especially if it's been sitting on the market for a long period of time. You kind of want to bring in a fresh perspective without losing the listing. So that's not unheard of no matter what. I actually do this all the time. When um, I have a listing, I actually put in a buyer's agent sign in the front and we co-list it together so they can get the buyers and then I would just represent the seller. So it's not unheard of. For me, the most important thing is the result. I mean took us three and a half years to build you. Wow. What did you buy the property for when you bought it? We should be discussing how you can sell it, as I also told her in, in the beginning. In addition to that, I would love you to You should know. not negotiate with me. You should negotiate with the customers. This is what I always I don't say. think it's a negotiation to ask about the lot that you would love me to help you a part of. Okay, so hold up a minute. There's nothing wrong with asking a seller how much they paid for a place because that's how we figure out how to sell it to somebody else. You know, in order for us to justify a price to a uh, potential buyer, we have to understand how much you purchase these things for. And if he's not willing to disclose that, well, there's ways around that. <laughs> You, just real estate agents can find out just about anything because there's a lot of things that are public record. <laughs> it's off of Coldwater Canyon. There's no view and it's a very busy road. I'm trying to justify a price so that when I bring people in here, I can tell them that this is the most amazing property and every cent that I'm trying to sell is justified. What did I tell you? That's exactly what you have to do. You have to justify the price. And if he's not willing to share that information, well, he's kind of losing out. He's not letting the real estate agent represent him fairly. And uh, you never wish to withhold information when it comes to selling your house. Your real estate agent is kind of like your attorney. We do not disclose anything you don't want us to disclose or we get sued. And this is the best way is to have the most truthful, honest conversation with your real estate agent so they can price your house right. But I know Christian well enough to know that he's not going to bring his friends or a potential client to this house if he can't run the numbers and, and see where the price is coming from. It's obviously a spectacular house, let me say that. I don't understand the asking price at all. I have to understand the math a bit, but I love the house, obviously. Spectacular house. So gorgeous. Yeah. All right, you guys probably don't see the problem here, but we've got the buyers over here and we got the sellers over here and people are talking to one another. 
in a million years, if you're buying or selling your home, you never talk to one another. That's why you hire a real estate agent in the first place is so that they can represent you. You unwittingly always end up disclosing something you probably shouldn't have. So never have a discussion if you're a buyer with the seller or the seller with the buyer, because that way you're not giving away your cards. Yes, it is an expensive project, but very rare to have two lots, yeah. especially in Beverly Hills. You know. What did you buy the lots for? And you see what he did right there? He asked him, why is it that your house is so expensive compared to all the other houses? What makes it so special? <laughs> and every seller thinks their house is extra special because they did something to it. Of course, you're in love with it. You've had a lot of memories in it. And sometimes those memories aren't as worth as much as it is to a buyer. So you have to think with this instead of this a lot of times. Good stuff costs. It took us over three and a half years to build. Four years. Four yeah, years. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. All right, good stuff may cost, <laughs> but let's be honest. He's overly attached to this house. There's no doubt about it. And um, there's no way he's gonna come down on his price. And there's gonna be no buyer on this planet that's gonna end up paying $75 million for a home that's not worth it. Sorry. Unless you have like Jimmy Hoffa's body in there or something, it ain't, it ain't worth 75 million. Sorry, buddy. Hi, Amanda. It's Lisa. How are you? Hi, Lisa. I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I am calling with um, not such great news. Unfortunately, my client that wanted to lease the family property is um, not interested anymore because they want, they're looking for like a work and home type of situation. Lease purchase or even leases, when it comes to a lease purchase, they always seem to like at the end of the year, they're like, oh, we'll just give up that huge deposit we put on there and we're gonna go somewhere else. And then you end up having to list the house again. And then um, sometimes these people that just lease the house, leases are tough. Working with renters is very tough. So um, I think she probably did this girl a favor by not <laughs> having a runner in there. I think she did a favor for her sellers too. All right, so how was her showing? How was Christine's showing? Um, Christine's showing, uh, I'm sorry. Was she here? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I mean, I mean, what's going on? What is happening? It doesn't look good. Okay, so when it comes to showings, Christine showed that house to a buyer and didn't let the actual listing agent know that she was showing the house. The way that real estate works, we have something called showing time that you where you book an appointment and there was no way that I couldn't know that someone was showing the house. Not only that, we have these lock boxes. As ugly as those things are, they are amazing. Hold on, let me pull one out for you. Hold that thought. All right, so <laughs> so this is a lock box and this thing is amazing because it has this little infrared little uh, noggin thing here. It opens up with our cell phones and they're highly secure because anytime somebody opens them up with their cell phone, it lets me know exactly when they went in the house. It lets me know when they leave because they return the cup at the bottom and there's no way that I wouldn't know that someone walked in the house by using one of the keys that was in here. You can't get one of these um, codes to open this unless you have paid the uh, local board for your um, for your dues so there's no way anybody could go into this house. Things obviously work a little bit different in uh, with uh, high priced houses. I don't know how she ended up calling the seller I wouldn't have done that. I would have let the actual listing agent, the original listing agent call the seller before I made an appointment to go visit it. But I mean, this is Hollywood and it's not so reality TV. <laughs> as long as we're not talking about the $75 million listing, you can talk about whatever the f you want that, to talk about. That is what I want to talk to you about. Oh my God. I've been thinking about our conversation. He's over it. And I just feel like three months is, is not enough time. Like not a lot of people Can I just know interrupt? That. We are never going to sell that listing and we are walking away from it. You have spent. All right. So I agree with them. $75 million for a house that's overpriced. Like I said, I would have never taken the listing in the first place. Nobody should have to try to sell something that's unsellable. And I know it like looks really pretentious. Who wouldn't want a $75 million listing to put on Facebook and social media sites, but, but it's $75 million and it's like $40 million overpriced. Everybody's going to say that. Every real estate agent is going to say that. Every buyer is going to say it. Nice house, overpriced. <laughs> Believe it or not, that was actually three episodes of Selling Sunset because they don't really talk a lot 
lot about real estate and so I had to actually go into three separate shows just to get the whole transaction together. If you like these kinds of things and would like to watch some more real estate reaction videos, go ahead and click this playlist right here. If you want me to react to a certain television show that you like, go ahead and put it in the comments section. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate advice matters.